Okay, so this is on page 637. We'll start with number three first. Uh, this is a good review for inverse variation. Now remember what we've talked about in the past? To find inverse variation, we need to have this constant variation figure out first. Do you still remember how to find the constant variation? Yes. Do you want multiply to do? 21 by 40. Very good. Maybe multiply the two values that can change over time. In this case, x can change and y can change. So for number three, you take 21 times 40, what will you get? 840. 840. So the constant variation is a product of the x and y. So when you take 21 times 40, well, I kind of meant, well, anyway, so we don't want to. That's 840. And you divide it by. And once you have your k, how do you figure out your I know. x? You divide by, by 84. Right. So to find k, you just have to take y, divide it by x. I'm oh, sorry, no, no, no. To find x. To find y, you just have to take k divided by x, or vice versa, right? Wait, Mr. I thought you were supposed to divide 21 into 40. No, that's not how you, you find a constant it. variation. Think of, go back, go back and think about the area problem that we did before. Same area, but different length and width. You know how the length can be increased and the width have to be decreased, and, and you know, vice versa, the other way around? But to find that, Area just like a constant variation, they could be multiplied on times like. Okay, so you look over here. We take k and divide it by eighty-four. So that means the answer is just ten. So y is ten in this. Okay, to so see the basic steps and how to do it. And uh, I actually did. I did forty times eighty-four, but now. Would you do like the same to find it? Yes. That's the same thing, but you first. Okay, so let's continue on again. Uh, for number four, if you notice, it is the same exact thing. So you would take 22 and four, and four to make what? 88. 88. So that means the constant of variation for number four is 88. And if you want to find out what x is, all you have to do is take the constant of variation divided by y, which is 16. So take that and divide it, you get yourself 5.5. .5. So x for number 4 is 5.5. It's not a hard problem to work on. That's why I said these are actually the easiest. Huh? I like these ones better. Okay. Um, we're good so far? Yeah. Make sure you take notes on this. And of course, if you miss anything, it will be available for you online, okay? Here's number five. By the look of this problem, you know so what kind of problem is this? Is it a question? A word problem? A word problem. It's not a word, but a word problem, right? Word problem, we have Willie and Meyer here trying to write an essay. For Willie, how long uh, did it take Willie to write an essay? Six hours. Six hours. So how do you write that? One over six. One over six. So for Willie, it'll take him six hours to write that one essay. What about Myra? Four and a half hours. One and a half, four and a half hours. So that means that four same four. essay. I mean, take her. Nine over two. Four point five. Good. Now, I, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. One essay, four point five hours, right? Yes. Together, I just want to figure out how long it take them to write that same essay. Is that correct? No. And you know what Michael just mentioned before? He said, "Oh wait, it's one over nine and a half." Because <laughs> isn't nine over two four point five? <laughs> so if you think about this. If I take that one right there, can I write it like this? Is that the same? No. Think. What is 9 divided by 2? So are you tell me that this is not the same thing as that? No. Wait, wait. Why? Okay, so you're asking, why am I writing it like this? Here's the reason why. Is it true that we know how to divide fraction? If we divide fraction, we take basically take the top fraction, multiply by the reciprocal of the second, right? I actually did 9 over See, this is where you kind of mess it up. Because when you divide it, that means it's 1 times 2 ninths now, because it's, you've got to turn your division problem to a multiplication problem. So you've got to have the reciprocal of 9 over 2, which is 2 ninths. So that means that 1 over 9 halves is actually 2 ninths. So now we can go back here and replace this whole thing with 2 over 9. If you don't believe me, you know, do it yourself. Get a calculator if you want to check it out quickly. 1 divided by 4.5, you get some value. And you take 2 divided by 9, you get the exact same value. Okay? But now, let's take a look at how we solve this. We need to clear out the fractions, right? So what is the LCD in this case? It is going to What's the LCD for all three? Uh, it's 18. 18 what? X. X. Because don't forget, 
There's an x here, so you don't have to include that in there. 18x. Now, would you like to multiply the top and divide the bottom, or would you like, would you like to divide first? Multiply and divide. Okay, that's your choice. What about the rest of you? Okay, let's divide first. 18x divided by 6. 3x times 1. 3x. Okay, Michael, if you want to multiply first, that's okay. Not that scroll. Okay, over here. 18x divided by 9. 2x. 2x times 2. 4x. 4x. 18x divided by x. 18 times 1. 18. And there it is. We have ourselves. 7x on the left-hand side because we combine like terms, and we have 18 on the right-hand side. And how do we solve for x? x um, 18 divided by, divided, by divided by 7. Okay. So divide by 7. So 18 over 7, if we have to divide it and keep it as a, a mixed number, I'll be 2 and 4 7 out. So that means the answer should be B. But the way that we set up the problem is pretty simple, right? And you can see it right there. Which kind of makes sense if you think about it. Um, the, the time should be less. So anyway, moving on to the next one, number six. OK, here's the thing. Every time I ask you to simplify, in your mind, you got to think about this. Hmm, can I make it simpler? Simpler means factor. Factor means you have to use the chart that I gave you. Is it in order? Is there a GCF you can take out? And so on and so on. Depending on the number of terms that I have, I use the appropriate strategy. Here, I look at the top one right here. There's not much I can do. Is there a GCF I can take out? No. no. Not yet, right? Well, actually none. What about the bottom? Three. So if I take out three in the bottom, what will we have? 2m minus 5. And then I discover something. Oh, wait a minute. Look at the top and the bottom. They are exactly what? They're not the same, but they're what? They're opposite. That's your observation. You got positive 2m, that's a negative 2m. This is a positive 5 on top, it's a negative 5 on the bottom. They're exactly opposite, and how do we fix this problem? How do we make the top look like the bottom? Do you remember how? Or you bring out the negative 1, right? So if we take out the negative 1 outside, then the top can be, re can be rewritten like that. And now, this is what you see. You see how that works? Uh, because I also asked you to state the excluded value. What is the excluded value here? How do we find it? How do we find the excluded value? Do you remember how? What are we strictly <coughs> looking for when we're looking for the excluded value? Zero where? Bottom. Look at the bottom. We don't really care about the three because you know it's going to go away. 2m minus 5 equal to zero, right? If we solve for m, what is that value that will make it zero? m is what? What is it? 5 over 2. And remember, we add the 5 divided by 2. That's how we got 5 over 2 as our excluded value. So I'm going to go ahead and name that as my excluded value. And so once my excluded value is, is done, what can I do next? Cross out. Cross out. Very good. Cross that out. What's that, what do I have left over? Negative 1 over 3. And I'm done. That's it. That's all I'm doing. You see it? So simplifying simply means factor to the best of your ability. Okay, so number seven is exactly the same thing. Look, uh, 3 plus x, 30 factor. Cannot do anything about it, so I put parentheses around. Look at the bottom. What can I do? What do you think? Xbox. Very good. Three terms. Not a PST. Xbox it. There's no GCF that I can take out anyway, so if you're going to be doing Xbox on it, what do you put on top? Negative 6, 5. What times what is negative 6 added to 5? 6 and negative 1. So that means I can now put it in a box, and the box looks like this. 2x squared, 6x, negative 1x, and negative 3. What can I take outside? 2. 2x. And the bottom, negative 1. And go, so let's carry it out. This is x, and this is a 3. Everything works out fine. So now I can rewrite the entire problem. It looks like this. 3 plus x on top. Bottom, I have x plus 3. And 
2x minus 1. Now, I want to teach you something here. Oh, by the way, what, is my, uh, what are my excluded values? How do I find the excluded values again? Zero. Zero where? The bottom. How many cases do I have? Two. Two. What's the first case going to be? Negative three. So that means x here will be negative three for my excluded value. What else can it be? One over two. One over two. One half. Because if I solve this for zero, I add the one divided by two, right? So these are my excluded value. I look at this carefully, though. On top, I have three plus x. On the bottom, I have x plus three. Are they the same? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, why? They're both positive. They're both positive. But remember, it is addition is commutative, right? Mm -hmm. 2 plus 3 is the same thing as 3 plus 2. So it's actually normal for us to recognize that, hey, 3 plus x, x plus 3, they're exactly the same. Uh -huh. Same exact term. So I don't want you to think about, oh, rewriting it. No, 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 you don't need to. You only rewrite, don't worry about it. You only, you only rewrite when they're opposite of each other by taking out the negative 1. This one, you don't need to rewrite because x is x, 3 is 3. They're exactly the same sign. So all you have to do is say, cross it out, done. And so what's left on the top? 1. So that means my final answer is simply 1 over 2x minus 1. That's it. Question on number 7. Right here, negative 3 and 1 half. Remember, before I cross it out, I have to find excluded values first. Do not make the mistake of finding the excluded value after you've simplified it. Huh? That's extraneous value, extraneous solution. That's different. Excluded values in this case, don't you notice that you are finding the zero case for both of them? So they're both excluded. Okay, moving on. For number eight, take a look. What do we do on the top? What? No, factor um, it out. How do you factor that out? Yeah. Xbox it, or do you recognize it to be a PST? Uh, yes. yes. It is a PST. But anyway, I'm going to show you that Xbox will also work, whether you like it or not. It will work for any case. So um, if you were to do Xbox on the top, don't you have 36 right here and 12 at the bottom? <coughs> so what comes plus 36 out of 12? 6 and 6. 6 and 6. So here's the box. Uh, 4c squared, 6c, 6c, and 9. I can take out a 2c on top, take out a 3 on the bottom, and I pair it up here, and guess what? Whoops. 2 here, c, and 3. See it? Exactly the same. So I got my top taken care of. Look at the bottom. What do we use for the bottom? What do you think? Xbox again. See it? Every time I ask you to simplify and it looks something like that, you know you have to factor it out. General strategy. So we're going to exit first. What is 2 times 8 of 21? Negative 42. Negative 42 and negative 11, right? What times what is negative 42 add up to negative 11? Negative 14 and? Three. Three. Looks perfect to me. And here's my box. 2c squared, negative 14c, 3c, and negative 21. Notice on top I can take out a 2c, bottom I can take out a 3. I can pair it up with c and negative 7. Everything checked out well, so now I can rewrite the whole problem like this. On top I have 2c plus 3, 2c plus 3. On the bottom I have 2c plus 3, and c minus 7. I didn't ask you to look for excluded values, although if I ask you, you can certainly find excluded values, right? But here, let's just simplify. So how do we simplify this? What do we cross out? Right. And that's all our answers. 2c plus 3 over c minus 7. Done. Do you see how, how simplification works? That's all we've done. Remember, the goal is to simplify, break it apart, cross out like terms or factors. Okay? Yes. Uh, is that two on the box? The well, here? The, the question mark. The oh, that's that's the square. Yeah, two c square. I'm just I'm just getting it from here. See it? All right. Moving on to number nine. Now, number nine will take some work here, so please pay attention carefully. First, that you see is 
you have two separate things. You got a top and you get a bottom. That makes it challenging. The top itself has some sort of fraction in it. And you know this x plus 4 is over 1, isn't it? Same thing the bottom. That's x plus 6 is over 1. So it's like a fraction at a fraction, and you don't have the same denominators. And so what do we do? Then what, what do we need to find? L's LCD. OK. So let's do the top, the, the uh, purple one. What is the LCD on the top? X minus, X minus 2. That should be simple. Every time you see a 1 underneath, you should like breathe easily because you don't care about that 1. Whatever <laughs> is left over there, that's your LCD. So for the purple side, X minus 2 is your LCD. Notice I put parentheses around to indicate that it's already factored completely. Now let's compare. This first fraction, what do I multiply to the top? X minus 2. Very good. So X minus 2, X plus 4. And you can clearly see it right here. Here's the 1, here's x minus 2. If you want to make the 1 look like x minus 2, don't just multiply the, the bottom by x minus 2. Whatever you do to the bottom, you also do it to the top, and that's what we're doing. Here, x minus 2 is already there. We don't need to multiply anything, so the 5 remains as is. Now, here's the part that people always miss. Remember that we have a binomial and a binomial multiply, and we want to break them out of the parentheses. How do we do that again? Box it, right? Box it. So, boxing here means we multiply inward, right? So and we're boxing it. Here's the box. Um, you have x minus 2, and you have x plus 4. So let's box this thing. This becomes x. Where you get the 5s right there. This is combining together. Before I can combine, I, have, I need to have a common denominator, right? That's what I have. OK, x squared, 4x, four. Four negative 2x, and negative 8. Combine like terms right there. That means on uh, after I box it, I have x squared plus 2x. Wait, yes, sir. Yes. What's on top of the box? I know, I know. I didn't have enough space. That's why I put them on. Oh, okay. I know. Usually, you, you can put that on top. OK? Uh, and look, plus 5. Because now we have the same denominator, I can now put them all together after I break it out of the parentheses. See it? So that's just the top part. Let's, let's go ahead and simplify it even more. What do we have here? x squared plus 2x minus 3. Is that correct? Yes. Everything over x minus 2, and I realized something. Oh, wait, that's a trinomial. Shouldn't we try to factor 2? X box it. But do we need a box for it? No. No, so just x it. We x it, we have negative 3 on top, we have 2 on the bottom. What times 1 is negative 3 add up to 2? 3 and 1, but which one has to be a negative? The 1. The one. So when I write it, it looks like this. x plus 3, x minus 1, everything over x minus 2. And that here, guys, is just the purple part of your problem. Now you got to repeat the same exact process for pink. <coughs> Meaning, we'll have to write it out again. x minus 2 is, once again, our... LCD. And here, what gets multiplied to the top? X minus. X minus 2. So here's x plus 6 times x minus 2, and of course, 15 will also remain as is. Here's another box on this, and I, I hope at this point you guys realize something. Instead of doing a box every time you write, you know that the shortcut is to do this? Of course, notice how I got the outer and the, I mean the, uh, the first and the last. x squared. That's negative 12. The middle term, I actually got by doing this. 6 times x is 6x. Negative 2 times x is negative 2. So 6x minus 2x, that's 4x. That's how I do it inside in, in my head. Basically. Right. Kind of like that. So here, is that a pure box like that to show you? I can just do it in my head. Oh, that's x squared plus 4x minus 12. Sure, you can do it. But to, for the sake of time, I want to just go and quickly get it done. But you can certainly see it here. Look, 6x, negative 2x, 4x when you combine it. Because if you fill out the box, you get the same exact kind of thing. Plus 15 over x minus 2. And we do the same thing on the other side. Um, x squared plus 4x plus 3, everything over x minus 2. Can we? What's negative 12 plus 15? Because we need to combine them together, right? Right. So if we x this thing, 
We have three on top and four on the bottom. What times what is three add up to four? Three and one. Three and one. So now I can write it as x plus three, x plus one, everything over x minus two. And this right here is the bottom part. We have a fraction divided by a fraction. What do we do? Reciprocal. Reciprocal of the what color? The pink or the purple? Pink. pink. So now if I write it, let me just use some different color. Uh, so here's x plus 3, x minus 1 over x minus 2 times x minus 2 on top. Over x plus 3 x Perfect. And can you see like factors that you can actually cancel? Indeed. Look, x plus 3 cancel, x minus 2 cancel, and the only thing you have left is x minus 1 over x plus 1. You're done. And that's what it is. I know it's a long process, but what? What? That's what it is. X minus one. X plus one. That's your simplified. You see, number nine. If you know how to do it from start to finish, you have a very good handle on chapter eleven, because it's gonna cover a lot, huh? In that same problem, there's like finding the LCD, simplifying. There's division involved. It's a lot in one problem. Yes, very good. Moving on. <laughs> Two, number ten. Oh, a um, whole bunch of uh, LCD again. Yay. Hey, good, good practice. You should be happy to see a lot of these okay, because now you have a good idea on how to find the LCD. Look at this. Every time you see like a fraction within a fraction, you have gotta separate it. Good strategy. Look at this. That's the top. That's the bottom. That's the top. That's the bottom. What is my LCD on the top? T. T. So if T is my LCD, what will get multiplied to the 1? T. T. What about the 9? T. T. No, nothing. Nothing. So that's the top. The bottom, what's my LCD? T squared. T squared. What will get multiplied to the 1? T squared. T squared. T squared. Nothing. And nothing. So now because I have a fraction divided by a fraction, you see that pace go coming over and over again. I want to make sure you practice that. We have fraction divided by fraction. What do we do? What do we do when we have a fraction divided reciprocal. by fraction? Reciprocal and times, right? So if we take reciprocal of that, this is what you see. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Did you see something here? What is t squared minus 81? That's a what, what does that look yes, like? Dots. 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 So if it's a dots, we can now write it like that. Is it? Isn't t squared minus 81? Factor to be t minus 9, t minus nine, times t plus 9. Yes. Dots, remember? Opposite sign. But because we have dots to help us, we can now cancel out the t minus 9. And, then and look. Cancel out ones. Right? And the, so the final answer that we have is t, t over, over t plus 9. Three steps nine. That's it, you're done. Right? It's doable. I mean, it's like everything's in there. Okay, look at 11. What is my LCD? 16. 16 is my LCD, and what's going to be multiplied to 5? 5T. 5T, very good. What about the U? 6U. 6U, very good. Perfect. Nice. What about the bottom? What's my LCD? T. T. What will get multiplied to 2U? 1. Okay, so 2U remains, right? What about the 3? 3T. 3T. There it is. So you have a fraction. Divided by a fraction. Reciprocal. Reciprocal again. So you have this. 5t plus 6u over 6t times t, t over 2u minus 3t. There it is. Yes. And and look, there's nothing that to cancel here, but look, isn't there a t that we can cancel? Oh, yeah. But it's a group. But it's in a group. You put the parentheses. It's, it's, a, a it's a group. It's linked by multiplication. But then why do you put both of yeah. them in a group? No, no, no. T by itself is actually by its group, right? Remember, the only thing we can not cross out when they're separated by plus or minus, remember? Wait, I want to say but if they're linked by multiplications, we can still cross it out. Yes. Okay. So I can cross out at T. What I have left is 5T plus 6U on top. Here. 
I don't want a 6 to be lonely outside, so I distribute it back in. So it's 12u minus 18t. And that is your final answer. How do you get 6u? Huh? How do you get 6u? How do you get 6u? Right here? Yeah. Well, think about it. If 6t is your LCD, then don't you have to multiply the bottom by 6 and the top by 6 to make it 6t? That's why. Okay? And that's number 11. We're good so far? Okay, moving on to 12. Twenty-one. Oh, hey, hey, we're we're getting there. I just want to make sure that I hit every single problem so that at least when you get home, you have this to practice. Oh, you should be happy with number twelve. What do we do? Uh, yeah, just minus. Oh, why? Subtracted. Yeah, why? It's, the same it's already the same denominator. denominator. So technically, don't we just have this? Right? I can group this because I, there's nothing to do for x minus seven. But look at the top. What can I do? Oh, Take out what? GCF of 2. So I add up with this. Look at that. So the answer is 2. Pretty crazy problem, right? And look at number 13. Watch what happened. I don't know why I have to do this, but explain to me what happened. Why am I doing oh, this? But look. Wait, why are you only doing this? Because look. Right oh, wait. There, you said it was there, oh, What is it? Uh, just, they're they're very simplified. For number 13, right? So, but the one that I did not put parentheses around, I need to simplify that. How do I simplify 2 n minus 8? 2 n minus, minus 4. Times it by 6 taken out, so I have n minus 4, right? Yeah. Bottom, I have 2 n plus 1. So, notice so far, everything is linked by <coughs> multiplication. <laughs> and then they have division here all the side. What do we do when we have division? Reciprocal. Reciprocal. So one over z, one minus, over three. z minus three. And uh, this is like the odd one, but who cares? Let's see what we can cancel out. N minus four. Anything else? No. Are you sure? Yeah. This is six and two on the bottom. What that gave you? Six and two. Three on top. And basically that's it. So now you have 3n plus 3 on the top, and you have 2n plus 1 on the bottom times by z minus 3. And that's all we can do, and we'll leave it. Okay, so we, we do, we try as much, as much as we can. If we cannot simplify it anymore, we'll just leave it. Okay, all right, moving on. To number 14. We're making good progress, guys. Good progress. Oh, look at 14. Um, first of all, we have a trinomial divided by a binomial. If it's factorable, we can certainly try to factor it using the Xbox, whatever. But let's say, pretend it is not factorable. Then what do you do? Long division. Long division. Very good. So with long division, this is how I set it up. Here's a 2n minus 3 outside. This one, everything is there. Every term is not uh, is accounted for, so do, I don't need to fill in anything. So it's a 2, it's a 1, it's not. So it's good. Remember, uh, remember that we always use the anchor term, which is the first term here. That has some variable in it, and we start that to find our first um, um, divot. <laughs> what do you multiply by? 5m. So when we distribute it back, we have 10m squared minus 15m. Watch what happens. We subtract, subtract. I put in, you don't forget to put in the subtraction yourself. And because I see double negative, it becomes positive. This is canceled, but this becomes 24m, and I bring down the negative 36. And I start this all over again. 2m times what is 24m? 12m. Plus 12. 12. Just 12, right. And then I distribute that. I have 24m minus 36. Ooh, it's actually good. You get a zero as a remainder, and you're done. So my answer to that one is simply 5m plus 12. That's it. It proves that it's factorable as well. Okay. But in case, I don't know whether it's factorable or, not, uh, factorable or not, I just do long division. Okay, question number 14. Do you think 15 is easy? No. No, no. Look at it. What's really involved here? A lot of factoring. Yeah, a lot of work, sure. Why not? But is it actually doable in terms of factoring? Do we need a box for, for um, any of them? No. No. So just exit, right? So if we exit the top one. We have negative 32 and 4. What, what times what is negative 32 after 4? Huh? 
8 and negative 4. Perfect. What about the bottom over here? 12 on top, negative 7 on the bottom. What times what is 12 add up to negative 7? Negative 4 and negative 3. Nice. So now I can just go ahead and expand it. x plus 8, x minus 4, x minus 3 on top, x plus 5, x minus 4, x minus 3. Look at that. I put the whole thing together because I'm multiplying. Anything to cancel? What? x minus 3 gone? Minus 4 gone. So that means I only have x plus 8 over x plus 5 left. And that's all there is to number 15. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I hope that you've seen some of the mistake you did on your homework too. Yeah. Which is you know, the whole point of doing this. Yeah. Okay? Don't reinvent the math. Okay? It's already done for you in a sense. I wish we did have to invent it though. That would be awesome. You can go back like a couple thousand years. Okay, we're good. Can you make a time machine first though? Yeah, that's impossible. You should try it, Mr. Newman. Okay. Okay, guys. How do we get from time to zombies? 16. <laughs> Can you kind of give me a brief overview of the problem? For 16, what would you do? What is it? Xbox. Xbox. Exit. 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 But we have division, so what do we do? Oh, don't you want it? Uh, flip the second one. Very good. Okay. So, we flip the second one. No, get out. I'm sorry. Who has Mr. Green third period? No, excuse me. Just leave it there. Now, please. This is the homework. I don't care. Don't disrupt my class. All right, there's like... Leave it right there on the counter. There's like three here. Thanks. Bye, Angel. Okay, moving on. Okay, next time if there's like uh, some message from another teacher, just leave it, okay? Not now. Don't disrupt my class. Moving on. So Xbox and a whole bunch of X's, really. Uh, let's do this first. If you're going to do an Xbox on that one, what do we have? What do we fill in? Uh, 24. Okay. 24. 11. <coughs> what times what? Is 24 add to 11? 8 and 3. 8 and 3. Here's the box. 4x squared, 8x, 3x, and 6, right? What can we take outside? 4x. 4x and? Three. Three. So now we can pair it up with uh, x and 2, right? So at least on the top part, I have this. x plus 2, 4x plus 3. Now I'm going to go and do this quickly because the rest is simply x in, right? Yeah. So here it is. The bottom, I will have x <coughs> minus 3, x plus 2. Watch what happened. I'm dividing, but because, but because I know I'm going to have to multiply it anyway, right? Oh. Meaning I will flip this to the top. And the top will go to the bottom. Is that true? So I'm going to go ahead and, and do the switch right now. Look at this. So on the bottom, let's factor it out. I have x plus 4, x minus 3. And on the top now, I move it back down. So I have x plus 4, x plus 4. There it is. I simply factor everything out. But I also remember to make the flip because I multiply by reciprocal. And now I can just go back and see if I can cancel anything out. X plus I have 4. X plus 3. X plus 4. X plus 2. So now it's simply 4. X plus 3. X plus 4. And that's it. We're only doing this one class period to do the test tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. There it is. So that's number 16. Take one number 17 here. So we'll tell you good time. Okay, what's the strategy for number 17? Divide what? Long distance. No, no, not long division, not, not in this case. What do we do? <laughs> what's, what's the best way to do this? Yes, remember, this is just a trinomial divided by the same exact denominator. So what do we do? Oh, Huh? 
I'm waiting for the right term here. Not factoring. So We're simply what? what? Breaking everything apart. Because notice that everything here share the same exact denominator. So can we just write it like this? Is that the same thing? Yeah. We talked about that before, right? And let's go ahead and simplify. What is 10 over 5? 2. Ten. Top or bottom? Top. Top. Z? Yeah, 2 Z. 2 Z. Over here. Zero. Zero? One. 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 Over, what is this? 5 on the bottom. 5 on the bottom. Z on the bottom. Z on the bottom. So what's on the, big, on the top? One. One. And that's it. You're done. Oh. Um, but that's all there is to it. I'm not asking for much. Why didn't you do it long distance again? Long division, long division usually when you have distance? Listen, long division usually when you have like multiple terms divided by multiple terms. That's when you use long division. Yeah, yeah. You see if you go back to the other one that I did earlier, you notice that this is a trinomial divided by a binomial. Okay? Here it's simply a trinomial divided by a monomial. So it's it's a lot easier if you just break them apart and divide by the same monomial. Okay? All right, moving on to 18. Okay, look at 18. Okay, now we're getting to a point where we have to find the LCD yeah. because we are adding fractions. And notice that these two don't look the same, so that means we have a problem. We cannot combine them yet until we have the same denominator. So for us to look for the denominator, uh, the denominator <laughs> we, need, we need to make sure that Everything is factored out completely. So ask yourself the question of, wait, is the top one factored completely? The 7y plus 14? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is 7y completely? Oh, oh, no. Oh. What can we take it out? 7. 7. So let me rewrite that. Can y you rewrite that? Oh, right. Very good. What about the um, negative 3 plus 6? Negative. What can be taken outside? 3. Negative 3. And negative what do you have left inside? Plus 2. One. No, not plus. Minus oh. 2, right? Oh. Okay. Now, can we simplify it a bit more? Look at this. We have six on top and negative three on the bottom. What would that become? Negative two on the top. Negative two on the top. So if I have negative two on the top, watch how I'm going to write it. I have seven y plus two here, same, but all of a sudden this problem becomes this. Do you see it? Because six divided by negative three is negative two. And there it is. And the bottom is simply y minus 2. Now, can anyone tell me, what is the LCD for this? What is the LCD? Y plus, two. y plus 2 is 1, yes. What else? Y minus 2. What else? Negative 3. 21. Negative 21. Now, you're looking over here now, please. I already simplified them up. 7. 7. So, I mean, my LCD is simply 7. Y plus 2, Y minus 2. 7, Y plus 2, Y minus 2. Why did you get it from the red side? Well, because I try to simplify more. See, I see 6 divided by 3. I can divide it. That's why. I'm just making it smaller. All right, so let's compare. Remember, I'm comparing the purple here, not the pink, okay? So what will we multiply to the top? Let's compare. This to this. Y minus 2 y minus 2. So that means the y on top will be multiplied by y minus 2. Over here. 7y plus 2. Okay. 7y minus 2. You see how that works so far? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So we want to combine the like terms. We, we want to combine them together. However, this is still inside parentheses, so how do we do this? We, no, no, no. If you cross it out, you go back to the original state. That means you can't combine them. We've got to make sure that we combine all the top together first before we simplify anything else. So, how do we break this out? Distribute. Distribute. And remember, please, I mean, I don't, want, I don't want you to make the same mistake of crossing this out. Look, if you cross it the one minus two, you go back to the state. That means you go backwards and solve it for it, or simplify it. So don't do that, okay? Yes? How did you get two, seven, one minus two? 
Oh, plus. I'm sorry. Plus. Thank you for reminding me about that. Okay. All right. So when we distribute this, we will have y squared minus 2y. And here, what is negative 2 times 7? Don't forget the negative front, so I have to carry with it. Negative 2 times 7? Negative 14. Negative 14 now distribute to each term inside. What do we have? Negative 14y minus... 28. 28, very good. Everything now, see now, Lionel, we can write it over 7y plus 2, y minus 2. And let's combine some more. We have y squared minus 16y minus 28 over 7y plus 2, y minus 2. Now look, for some of you, you should be probably thinking about, hey, maybe we can do x on this to factor it out. But the reality is it's prime. Cannot factor anymore, so we'll leave it like that. If it's factorable, yes, we can certainly cancel out more if we can. But because it's not factorable, <laughs> we'll leave it. Okay? And that's number 18 for you. Any questions? All right, move on to 19. 19 is actually a shorter problem. Hold on, Mr. And look at this. Every time you see a number without the denominator, it's automatically over a 1, one right? What is the LCD here? X plus 2. X plus 2. X plus 2. So what gets multiplied to the top? One. One. So it simply means x plus five on top. But over here for six. X plus two. X plus two. And I distribute here. I have x plus five plus six x plus twelve. Everything over x plus two. Any like terms to combine on the top? Five and twelve. Five and twelve. What else? Six and x. Six and x. So it's seven x plus seventeen. X plus two in the bottom. And that's it. Done for nineteen. Oof. We're making record time. Very good. I have two more to do. Nice. Okay. <laughs> okay. 20. Look at 20, guys. Look at the difference between this problem from the uh, last couple problems that we've done. This is not an equation. For the last couple problems, it's all about simplifying. This is an equation, so I changed the word simplify to solve. Solve means I'm going to have like a variable equals to some value at the end. Okay? And, but technically, we still have to do the same thing. If we want to solve this, we have to take care of our fraction. So we need to find what? Yeah, LCD. What is the LCD for all three? 12 t. 12 t. So with this time, though, because it's an equation, we can clear fraction. For a regular expression, we cannot clear a fraction like that. We have to leave the denominator and everything alone. But here, we can certainly clear out the denominator uh, altogether. So how do we clear this out? What is 12t? You want to divide or multiply? <coughs> divide. Divide. So 12t divided by 3t? Uh, four. Four. Yeah. four times two. Uh, eight. eight. And this one, 12t divided by two? Uh, six, six. Six what? Don't forget six about your t. Six t. Times one. 16. 12t divided by 14. 3. 3. Or 3. 3 times 3? 1. Or 9. Nine. Sorry. So, no problem. Minus 8, subtract it, and I have here a 1. How do I solve for t? Divided by, divided six. by 6. I still have students trying to do something like this. You oh, can't. Dear. Don't do that. You solve them for t, so you don't mess with t. You leave it alone, right? So t now is 1, 6. And that's how you do it, for 20. Wow. Only if I knew this was <laughs> Well, now you know. It's not too late. What? Can I say one more time? You, I think you will benefit from doing it all over again, check answers to study for your test. That makes more sense. But you can't get points for it. But understand the test is the test worth a lot more. I rather get full credit on test and full credit at home. Yeah. How about that? Oh, yeah. so Even if you, let's say you didn't do it at Walmart, it's fine, fine, but at least you still use what I have today. Okay, 21. Last problem of the day. Okay, over one. Right? What is the LCD? C plus, C plus five. five. Very good. So look. She said the LCD is C minus four, C plus five. Shh. 
Okay, guys. She did say what get canceled out? I'm going to trying to cancel first before oh, multiply. Good, so what get multiplied to the top? Um, <laughs> what get multiplied to the top? C plus 5. Okay, moving on. What, <laughs> what get multiplied to the negative 2? C plus minus 4, C plus 5. Very good. All of them. And last one, what get multiplied to the top? Um, 4 C minus 4. 4 C minus 4. 5? Yeah, because you cross out the C plus 5, you have C minus 4 left. That will get multiplied to the top. Okay? And now, let's clear up some work here, some problem here. Uh, how do we clear, uh, break out the parentheses here? Distribute. Distribute. So that is 2 C squared plus 10. Now this is the part where people will miss. It's the no ends, 10C. Yeah, 10C because it's 10C. Oh yeah, good. Uh, this is what people will miss. You see you have a binomial times a binomial, and you have a number outside of it? Uh-huh. Don't distribute a number yet. Just take care of your box first. Okay. If your box is C minus 4 times C plus 5, you just, if you can actually do it in your head. Can you do it in your head now? I hope. No. Let me show you again, slowly. It's Let's C work together. Square. First of all, C squared. C times C, C squared, right? This is negative 20. Is that correct? So the first two terms, the last two terms. That's negative 20. And this is how I got the middle. Whoops. Negative 20C. C minus 4. C plus 5. Okay, this is how I got the middle. You take the, the two inner and the two outer. The two inner is negative 4C. The two outer is 5C, so maybe 4C and 5C combined C. to get 1C, right? So, there it is. So noise. And that's how you do it. Noise. Okay. On this side, I can also distribute to make it 4C minus 16. So it's not the answer, it's just combining. Now, yeah, the, the next step is to combine all our terms together before we solve for anything else. And look, we still have distribution to work on. So 2c squared plus 10c minus 2c squared minus 2c minus 40, or plus 40, equals to 4c minus 16. Almost there, guys. Do you see any like terms that we can actually combine? Um, two. No. Any like terms? 2c no, no, no. squared. 2c squared. Ooh, that's a negative 2c squared. What would happen? Uh, Zero. Zero. They get canceled. What about the 10c and the negative 2c? 8C plus 40 equals to 4C minus 16. Now, can you help me solve for C? What do we do? Subtract 4C. That would give us 4C plus 40 equals to negative 16. Now what? Subtract the 40. That would give us 4C equals to negative 56. Right? Yes. And we divide by 4. So C is negative 14. Oh, there. Um, remember, if I ever ask you to state the extraneous value and stuff like that, that means you check to make sure that there, you don't have a zero at the bottom. Always. But there it is, guys. Ooh.